It must guarantee that the transferee will respect the internationally protected rights of the transferred persons. At the time that the transfer took place in 2009, the United States announced that it had such assurances from the Iraqis. I suggest to you that anybody who has watched these videos or anybody who watched the videos of the invasion in 2009 know mm -hmm. that humanitarian treatment is not running armored personnel carriers through a fence. Humanitarian treatment does not include denying chemotherapy to a cancer patient. That's not what the Iraqis promised the United States. So what does the Geneva Convention say? It says if the transferee is unable or unwilling to carry out these responsibilities, the transferor must reassert its position, and it goes on to say this obligation must be observed. That is one of the two legal arguments in favor of U.S. resumption. The second is even more straightforward. At the time that the protected person status was declared, not granted, but declared by the United States in the summer of 2004, each member of Ashraf was asked to sign a contract. And the contract said that the people of Ashraf would give up their arms, would not fight back against the Iraqis, and in exchange for that, the multinational force Iraq would provide for their protection until final disposition could be made. That has not happened. The people of Ashraf have kept their side of the bargain. The United States has not. Those, I submit to you, are the legal arguments in favor of U.S. continued responsibility. I need hardly repeat the moral ones, nor I har need I hardly in this audience remind you all of what is at stake as we have this conversation. Thank you.